Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the podcast Strikes Back. My name is George. You're listening to the weekly movie show with the boys Connor. Hello. And Benny. Hi there. Well, 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 you heard it right. Robert Pattinson is going to be Batman. We're going to be talking about it. Crazy times, man. Crazy times. Captain America. Oh, no, wait. Not Captain America. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We got some updates there. Plus, tons of trailers. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Toy Story 4. It's going to be freaking great. But... Is everything okay? Yeah, no, I just love it. That, that's how I sound when I'm trying to like sort my thoughts out. <laughs> just be like, yeah, crazy yeah. times. It's crazy, bro. Crazy, crazy times. It is crazy. <laughs> what am I meant to be reading? Who would have thought uh, Robert Pattinson? Anyway, we'll get into that a bit later. <laughs> but before we catch up on the news, guys, we're going to catch up on what everyone's been watching this week. Some delightful things, I'm sure. Benny. Yeah, something like that. Um, I watched, of course, the grand finale of Game of Thrones as uh, Connor no doubt did as well. Yep. Um, we're going to be having our own little private chat about that that you can tune into separately. So I think I'll just leave it at that. For the whole season. The whole season. Um, a lot of it, I'm sure, will be the finale. Um, I also watched uh, a, a nice little, uh, very low-key release that um, you guys I definitely heard of, but I've probably forgotten about, no doubt. Um, Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. I um, saw a trailer for that. New DC day. animated film. Um Look, it's not great. It's definitely not for everybody. Yep. In fact, I would say it's specifically just for me. I was, gonna, I was <laughs> me say, only. I know it's about to follow this. It's like <laughs> such a disclaimer. Look, it's not good, but... Yeah, well, it, it really... It, it's kind of the average quality of these DC animated ones, which range from, like, awful to surprisingly good. Um, and this one's, like, decent, but not the top-tier stuff from them. Um, Bit of a random question mm. in that vein. I've seen... Um, uh, Ninja Batman pop up Batman on Ninja. Batman Ninja, yeah, uh, pop up on it's either Netflix or Stan or something, mm. one of those streaming yep. services. Is that worth a watch? I would say so. I haven't watched the whole thing myself, but um, from what I understand, it's fairly rote. But I think the the visual styling enough is is so interesting because they went to an actual Japanese animation company to do it, which um, you know none of these Warner Brothers animated things are generally you're going to go in just for how it looks because they're mm-hmm. all pretty like. Pretty not yeah, even as good as TV used to look for them so long ago because the market's just not there anymore. But um, that one looks stunning. And I think just that weird hook of like Batman in feudal Japan is enough to kind of keep you yeah. watching. <laughs> um, that one's been on my list for a while. Um, and finally, I decided to watch uh, the original 1992 Aladdin uh, Disney animated film before checking out the new one. Oh, Ben, why? And I ended up not doing that. and instead oh. watched Hercules for some reason. <laughs> Um, oh, I was so scared for you. I was like, why would you set yourself up for that? What, what, what was that decision-making process like? Well, uh, someone said, let's watch Aladdin. I was like, yeah. Then I, then I was like, I think I was scrolling through um, Foxtel or something that has a bunch of them on there. I'm like, no, I want to watch Hercules instead. And I, I saw it on there. And then I'm like, no, I have the Blu-ray. So I tracked that on instead. I fucking love the, 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 the movie to hell. Um, it's one of the lesser... Um, Disney Renaissance animated films in most people's minds. But it's in that little pocket. But that one really captured me as, as, a, as a kid. Mm-hmm. So that one's kind of up there with, with my favorite. That was a beautiful time wherein there was this convergence of the 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 hand the hand drawn animation with the level of technology and CG work. Mm-hmm. And it was just at this really proficient, um, technically brilliant phase. I watched a little bit of um, Aladdin this week. Mm. Um, the old one, uh, I watched about half of it and it is just so gorgeous, man. And, and mm. the art style and, and the flair and the characters really come to life. And it's quite, it's not, it's, it's amazing how much more technically brilliant CG is, but it just doesn't have that evocative thing mm. that the hand-drawn anim- animation it, has. I always found that in Aladdin, that Aladdin, 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 Aladdin. <laughs> Um, in that particular scene where the, the CG are heavy with the carpet going yeah. out of the cave of wonders, that always seemed a little bit out of place to me like it was i'm sure at the time it was visually stunning and all that and you're like you ride along with it but like you know nowadays i look at it i'm like "Mm, that just doesn't feel right i love it though i just like i don't know man just seeing the evolution of the technology is very satisfying for me and then also looking at how carpet was done where he's all cg other than his tassels on the end and i'd never really noticed that before the tassels are hand drawn the cg the rest of him cg so we're getting too deep into it technically he's hand drawn and they've just um put on the texture digitally. Oh, really? Is that what they the, did? The pattern, yeah. Okay, cool. But, um, so there was some kind of uh, CG work yes, in yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so yeah, yeah, and and they were they were they were blockbusters for that, like ten year period. Yeah. And these these two D animated films, and it, it was you know the end of them. It was their their last hurrah. What did and then make like two hundred million or something like that. Who can say? And then the, uh, the information is lost to time. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Consult the tablets. <laughs> uh, Home on the range happened. Home on the range. I think uh, put a nail in the hand drawn animation division until Princess and the Frog. A, a movie about cows starring Roseanne Barr. How did not? How did that not re <laughs> reignite the the industry? Yeah, that's certainly a thing. Anyway, that was me for the week. Nice, Connor. Cool. Um. So. Like Ben, I watched the Game of Thrones finale. Um, Is it and the Game of Thrones? No, it's the finale. Game of Thrones finale. I'm doing, the I'm game doing of, what the you game do. Of Thrones yeah. finale. Like, what you, what's going I can't, on? I can't deal with two of you. <laughs> <doing> <laughs> what, what, have I, what have I done wrong here? <laughs> I was um, just tripping out for a second there. <laughs> the Game of Thrones. And I tried my hardest to make it through the entire season two of Man in the High Castle, and I got nine seasons in and nine, or nine seasons in. yeah nine seasons yeah. in the first wow. season that's amazing um no i got nine episodes in and i like i was literally before i you know before i got here i was trying to finish off um the ninth episode and i just couldn't quite get there so i'm nearly done episode you have a two. job don't you because you always seem yeah. to be coming from watching tv yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that the job yeah yeah about that. i had like i had like i think you know 10 minutes left in the episode mm. so when i like i got home i had you know 10 minutes i was like trying to change while <laughs> <Yeah. looking. laughs> um look i the i am increasingly impressed with this tv series it seems like such a below the radar um series and maybe that's just because amazon prime isn't as large here in australia um i'm not sure what the reception is like in america but I barely hear anyone talk about it here. Um, I, I, yeah, I think this series is really ramping up well. Nice. Um, I had some weird expectations for it because, George, you mentioned to me that it, you know, you've heard that this becomes a little bit more sci fi. You see that in season see. one, didn't you think? Like a little it, bit. It's sort and, of edging and, in. Yeah. And, and they dip their toes in season two. They don't really go overboard with it. I think, you know, there are some things that you just need to kind of accept and move on. And, and you know, apart from the fact that it's in an alternate reality, mm. um, it's not too sci, uh, sci-fi heavy. Um, one of the things I think that this series does really well is humanizes the characters and um, gives villains or people that are introduced as villains give them more than a, a one dimensional kind of character. There's a lot of complexity there. Yeah. You, Rufus spe- Sewell's character. Yes. Yeah, spe- especially going into, you know, season two, you, you start to envision all the characters in this series as actual humans that have faults and, and, you know, traits that are both, you know, you know, characteristics of heroes and villains, you know? And I think that that's something that game of Thrones gets a lot of praise for. Um, and, and I think that's one of the... Got a lot of praise for. Yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> Got a lot of praise for. Um, and I think that that's, you know, that's one of the major hooks of that series. And I think that that, for me, is one of the major hooks that has kept me on this series is just, you know, there, yeah, there's nothing more entertaining to me than giving, you know, bad people, I say in air quotes, you know, humanizing traits or, or you know, more than a... In the gray area. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree, and we, I think everything's moving in that way more and more as time goes on. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, the the good guys are more complex, the bad guys are more complex. So. When you can have sympathy for mm. the bad guy, like I mean, there's so many movies where you know the 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 villain is so bad that you would never in a million years dream of having sympathy for them, and therefore you know it doesn't really mean anything when they're defeated or when they're you know. Like it just the, the stakes aren't there for me, but when you when you give that some complexity, in, yeah, yeah, the tragic villain, man, yeah, yep. So that's me. Nice. I've just been trying to pump through that season. Nice one. And there's only one more to go. Well, I watched a little bit of Aladdin, as I mentioned before. I'm going to finish that tonight. Also watched um, went on a, a little bit of a Friday night horror binge and watched Oculus. Uh, my plan against Oculus, which I talk about a lot on this podcast. <clears throat> it's only the second time I've watched it, but fucking hell, man. This is such a brilliant movie. And if you're a fan of Haunting of Hill House, there's a lot of parallels in these two projects. Mm-hmm. Um, we're sort of in, in a single location, but you, you're seeing things from uh, lots of different timelines and things are interweaving across um, multiple dimensions. And it's just really, really well put together. Um, if you're a horror fan and you haven't seen Oculus, 
do yourself a favor and dial that in because you will not be disappointed. And if you are, hit me up and tell me I'm a fucking idiot. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> I also watched another one. Wait, wait, why do you assume that if they are horror fans that they're going to disagree with you? I don't know. I'd be very interested <laughs> if they would be. Um, now, then I also, I've been kind of trying to find something like Oculus. You know, I'm like, where's that little gem that's sitting around on Netflix or... That for some reason nobody knows or talks about. Yeah. Mm. So I found, um, I just sort of type in like indie horror or horror recommends on YouTube and this girl's channel came up and I can't remember her name, but she went through a lot of movies that I was like, okay, yeah, we're, we're in the same kind of ballpark here. And she recommended this movie called Creep. Um, it's from 2014. It's a handheld, one of those handheld cam, um, what do you call it? Found footage. Found footage. Mark Duplass. Yeah. Um, this was, have you seen it? Mm -hmm. what, did, uh, what, what did you think? Because I was very, very impressed. I didn't think it completely nailed it, but the, 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 the simple concept is this guy basically, um, he's a videographer and he finds this other person's ad that says, hey, I want to film something. And he goes and visits the guy and things unfold from there. Um, don't want to give too much away. But I just found this without, th there's not really that much that happens in this film, but not it kept all. my engagement throughout the whole way through. And I think the script was really strong. I thought that it, the, ca the performances were great. Um, it's definitely not anything crazy. It's in terms of like, it's not going to knock your socks off kind of thing. Go in knowing that it feels like something that was shot by like two guys over a weekend. Yes. And then you'll be impressed. Were I was, you not that impressed I was a little it? underwhelmed because okay. there was quite a bit of hype for it. I'd read a lot about it before going in, <laughs> just in terms of people saying watch it, which is kind of a killer always. But um, yeah. uh, very, very cool little movie. I, I really recommend anything that the Duplass brothers are in, kind of involved with. They're such prolific creators and they're, they're not really all that well known. Um, no way. Have there's actually one movie f starring Mark Duplass and um, what's the, the Elizabeth Moss um, called The One I Love, which is not at all a horror. And yet I found it one of the creepiest movies I've ever seen. It's so weird. It's kind of like a uh, mostly like a comedy drama, I guess. Okay. And I don't want to say anything about the premise, but The One I Love, I really recommend. It's right. so weird. Cool. Um, but yeah, Creep is really cool. Check out Creep 2 as well. Very okay. interesting. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Have, have you watched uh, Wreck? Yes, many times. The Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not uh, like, don't go expecting the same kind of thing. Like this one is, yeah, as you said, it's like two guys on a weekend rented out a house, like an Airbnb and kind of shot a movie. Mm. And this is what turned up at the end. I, I, I can't, it's hard to kind of describe this film because of how, how found footage it really does feel. Whilst Wreck, if you compare it to Wreck, Wreck feels a lot more well put together and feels like it's got a lot more production to it. Mm. So this one was really cool. I um I think if you're after a little horror film, it's only like 80 minutes as well, so you can burn through it real fast. Mm. Um, I bone also through burn through it. Oh, I thought you said bone through it. Bone, <laughs> yeah, well, that too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you used to be able to do it with your uh, Blu-ray cases, right? But Netflix is a bit oh, tough. Christ. Anyway, there's always the Apple TV box. And also I picked up the X-Men 9 series deal on uh, Apple movies and I'm starting to work my way through that. Is there a roller coaster ride? Chucked on X-Men 1. Don't want to say too much about this because I think down the track we'll, once Dark Phoenix is out, we'll do a, an X-Men rankings episode. But the one thing I'll say about this is, man, it is so... For, two, for the year 2000, this, is, this was the com one of the comic book movies that really set the tone for the next, what are we, 19 years of of uh, comic book movies. Like mm. it is just so sophisticated. It really elevated the genre. If you compare this like three years prior to that, Batman and Robin came out. I mean, you can't even compare the two. So how bizarre is it seeing Hugh Jackman, not completely like just, he looks ripped. like a little twig in this. Yeah. It's bizarre, isn't it? But I liked his hair in it. it his hair is like a little less like neat and put together. He's like a little bit more rough around the edges, but um, the film kind of devolves in the in the back half and, and doesn't quite come together. But hey, it's a fascinating case study in terms of you looking at at its, its place in the history of comic book movies. It's funny you mentioned his hair, which I think is kind of awful in that movie. But the, the I think it's awesome. The, it's so I, it's so silly. But the, the story goes that his hair was like that because Kevin Feige was on set making it look like it does in the comics. <laughs> okay, and that's that was just an example of his passion for right. the characters and, okay. and how he's kind of gotten this far. Kafagi's there with his little rolly things. You know, <laughs> yeah. that, uh, yeah. Shh, come here, Hugh. Come on. Yeah. 
Well, that's me for the week. I think we got some news to catch up on. All right, let's get on with it. Uh, as you mentioned already, George, um, Robert Pattinson is all but locked in to play Batman in Matt Reeves' upcoming film, The Batman. Uh, what do we want to bet that this doesn't actually pan out? There's so much hype around it. I this just it's feels happening. like this just feels like one of those stories that's going to be around for a couple of weeks and then oh, Pattinson actually isn't in it, or he's dropped out, or you know some kind of conflict is going to happen. Do you think? It just I don't know. It feels like that to me. I, I, maybe I'm being cynical, but I, you know, especially with the this particular property, which has seen so much turbulence and change and all that, like it just. Something about it just screams, this is never going to happen. The other, the other yeah. main names that were apparently in the running were Nick Holt and mm. uh, Aaron Taylor-Johnson. So I really fucking hope it is Robert Pattinson because <laughs> if it's Aaron Taylor-Johnson, I would not be, not be okay. You don't want uh, Russian, <laughs> <laughs> Russian Batman. Nebulously Eastern yeah. European. <laughs> Welcome. Mm. Yeah, there's been a lot of negativity around this. Um, I'm seeing... In the uh, mainstream. In the yeah. mainstream, I'm seeing a lot of people like, that's not my Batman. Well, fuck you. Who is Batman? What? Yeah. Why is Batman? Are people uh, actually saying not my Batman? Well, people say that's not my insert character X. Yeah. You know, that's not um, my Luke Skywalker. But for me, I think he's a really credible actor, and I think he's done an amazing job trying to put uh, a strong foot forward after Twilight, and that could have really typecast him. So I want to see more from this guy. He hasn't done a blockbuster in a while. Mm. I'm keen. He's he's weirdly defined by Twilight in I think the opposite way that you'd expect. I think he's railed so much against that kind of production and that, you know, that image of him that, you know, he's just like, he's the exact opposite. I think his career has been defined by picking projects outside that realm. Well, yeah, Um, ever since, ever since that, you know, career debacle for for him and Kristen Stewart, both of them have gone on this amazing trajectory of picking Super interesting kind of Indian and low budget films. Um, and they've both done Hunts just Man amazing Man. work yeah. and such good movies. Um, if I could just name check one, um, Good Time from I think just a couple of years ago, um, made by the Safty brothers. Yeah, you mentioned this not too long Fucking ago. Fucking amazing. One of my absolute favorite movies of that year. I don't think I saw it in that year. Is this the one where it was like multiple genres? It was like a horror film, a comedy? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. No. Sorry. What no. am I thinking of then? It's about him. He has a mental, mentally challenged brother there in New York. It's fucking mind blowing. Um, but also, you know, he's he's worked with so many amazing directors. He did uh, Cosmopolis Cosmo- with Cronenberg. Which what did you which think wasn't of that? Great. But no, I'm no. always a Cron- I'm always there for some Cronenberg. Yeah, I, I I liked it. Didn't love it, but I thought he was very good in it. Yes, I think that that movie's major failing was the marketing department because they. Yeah, for I'm, sure. I remember watching that film, and I wasn't like, you know terribly angry at it but i remember thinking like there's going to be a lot of people that are coming in this cinema with some very specific expectations yeah um, and leaving very very disappointed and then you just Mm. slap them over the head and you go hey it's a david cronenberg on the poster fucking get your fucking (laughs) shit together son um so i mean in terms of robert Robert, robert patterson rabbit um, poppins (laughs) yeah nothing to do with him being a credible actor or not but his suitability for Batman, how do you feel? He's got the chin, baby. <laughs> yeah. I'm I've already on. done the whole, oh, I'm yeah. like, has he got the chin? <laughs> I think that's what everyone did. They just found a picture of Robert Pattinson yeah, yeah. and just like blocked out Adam's <laughs> face. First, first thing I did was went to Google, type in Robert, Robert Pattinson H, autofilled height, click that. Yeah. <laughs> saw that he's six foot tall. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> like he's got the chops and he's, he's tall enough. He can definitely get built because it's Hollywood. Anyone can apparently. Roid him up, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah um, what is his name? Boss Logic? Oh um, yeah, m- m- the graphic some, designer. Yeah, did some uh, markups oh, of him. Oh, did he? And, yeah, yeah, and, and it looks um, with the mask on. It looks pretty cool. Just mm. as a side note, that dude's getting employed by like he's gotten stuff with the the Avengers campaign. He did an Aladdin poster. Like, it's so cool to see how he's really getting his name out there. And you know, yeah, I love, I love the work that he does. Um, the uh, I'm just kind of. I don't know if I see him in that kind of role, though. I mean, it's 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 one of those things where time will tell. But I've always felt that Robert Patterson is a bit softer as a character, like just as the the kind of image that he portrays or the 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 vibe that I get from him that has sort never of really been yeah has never really been commanding. And um, you know, previous Batman's, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, they have all had that certain level of commandingness to them. 
I'm just thinking about Clooney here. I'm like, yeah. I, I, I'm not even, not, not even sure. Bad nipples. <laughs> I mean, one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's the argument whether he was a good or bad Batman. Um, he was bad. The, but I, for me, you know, Ben Affleck, I think, again, good, bad, or indifferent, he was commanding. He felt like there was a presence in the room. I, that's the part that I'm not sure that I will feel with Patterson. And Patterson. I'm, I keep doing that. <laughs> Patterson. Patterson. Um, that's the part that I'm going to kind of wait to see something, like whether it's a you know, first tra- teaser trailer or something. I just I need to see that kind of him in What's that What's the role. interpretation of this Batman? Because yeah. what I thought was really cool about a f- uh, series that we reviewed earlier this year was Titans. And I really liked what they did with Batman there, where they made him a little more mysterious. He seemed a little more fucked up. Mm. Um, they kind of gave it a bit of a twist. And I hope they do that with this project. That Matt Reeves has said they're going a bit more down of a detective, film noir vibe. Could he, I mean, what can they add in here? I think if there's enough in here, there's there's something cool to do with Batman. And as you said, Connor, with that sort of vulnerability he brings to it, can we do a bit more of a damaged soul in this? I would like to see something down that uh, path. I guess that brings up, the, I, I feel like I'm being so cynical about this, um, but that brings up the other question of, do we actually feel like seeing another Batman film? Yeah. Yeah. Especially we, from Matt Reeves. We haven't had one, just a Batman movie since The Dark Knight Rises, which was, um, you know, hyperbole aside, very flawed. Um, so what, 2008 was The Dark Knight? Yep. Was it? So I'm, I'm absolutely ready to see like a Batman movie from a creator who I think is a genius. Matt Reeves, I absolutely love. Um, so I guess even less so than just a Batman movie in general, but... The one coming from him, yeah, hell yes, yeah. and I think I think Pattinson's a really good, um, good match to that director as well. And you know they talk about, as you said, George, kind of a noir vibe for this one, and more of a detective story. Just elements that we haven't seen um, put to the forefront with Batman yeah. necessarily, um, not together or not in a while. Yeah, and I, I guess the reason I'm asking is not not specifically because it's been a while since we've had a, um, a Batman movie, but he's never really left the public eye, you know, in general. Even if, if you take all the live action movies aside, there's always animated, fil- uh, you know, films and TV shows and he's referencing Titans. Like, he, he, you don't have to go far to find some kind of property referencing Batman. Yeah, um, more so than Superman, more so than Iron Man. He's yeah. been around for a long time. And I mean, people talk about, time. you know, superhero fatigue when it comes to the Marvel Universe. And I mean, Batman's been shoved in our face for well longer yeah, than the last 10 years. Five de- five decades. So, I mean, I, I'm coming at it from that. I'm, you know, I'm like, I can only see, I can only, I guess, stomach so many retellings of Batman. I'll, I'll reserve my full judgment for when we see some kind of teaser trailer, get some idea of, of the direction that they're going. Um, I can't but, wait to ask you in like 30, 40, 50 years, like, are you ready for the 87th interpretation <laughs> of the live action Batman? Yeah, Connor? that's, that's kind of like, like <laughs> when, when is enough? <laughs> yeah, no, uh, to be honest, I'm very positive about this. So I, I think um, I think all the ingredients are there for something great, but uh, I will hold my reservations until we get a bit more of a look in a trailer. Yeah, yeah I, I've been just without... Um without a, you know, an asterisk next to it, really happy with DC since Justice League, I think, which was the nadir of pretty much superhero since, filmmaking. Since, as in, like, after Justice League. The day League. after yeah. Justice League was released. Yeah. yeah. So, so all the steps they've taken since then, um, I've been really on board with. So hopefully they continue that. Yeah, I agree. Um, just also quickly mentioned, apparently this movie's going to feature uh, the Penguin and Catwoman. Um, so the Batman exact Returns. same duo from Batman Returns. Yeah, but um, obviously it'll be a very different movie. That movie was a Tim Burton cartoon. It, it it begs the question how um how fantastical are they going with this because the penguin was one of those characters that couldn't have fit into the Chris Nolan uh interpretation not, 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 Tim, not Tim Burton's version in not, in the comics he's just an arms dealer and a gangster kind of guy yeah they're not going like to get you, Danny you, DeVito to come back and um, put it this way his role. put it this way if Chris Nolan listed all the Batman villains uh, sort of you know that he would put in the pool of what he would um choose for his films I would say 
Penguin would probably be low on that list. I would or disagree. Or non-existent. Yeah, I would disagree. Right. Clayface would be low on the list. Poison yeah. Ivy would be low on the list. Yeah. The Penguin, there, it was heavily rumoured to be actually cast as um, Philip Seymour Hoffman for a yeah, long time. And that right. was a very interesting That was a great thing. cast. I think that would have been sick. And I mean, when you think about it, the Joker seems like one of those characters that no one would stray away from. Like, I mean, mm. he seems a little bit more gritty and, and he took a character that's kind of seems a little bit more fantastical and brought him into that you know, I, the gritty world of the Nolan. Not to mention sphere. he did Rachel Ghoul and Scarecrow in the first. Yeah, film. exactly. Yeah. So I think I think Bane. the Penguin would have been right up his alley in okay. terms of interesting um, taking that. And maybe and, I'm and, thinking and, about the Danny DeVito one too much. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> the literally the one who literally I, had flippers. That's the only real reference point I have for Penguin. Mm. So what was the one in um, yeah. the what's the '60s version? What's the guy's name? The one that did the movies? Uh, Adam West. Adam West. There was Penguin in that. I think. No, don't remember that. Well, yeah, I think he'd be the more movie, like isn't the, it? Yeah. the one in the um in Gotham. He was like a, one of the main antagonists in Gotham recently, and that was a very kind of down to earth character. Mm. Okay. Um, well cast. And uh, we also got uh, Catwoman in in the Dark Knight Rises as well. So yeah. this will be what Halle Berry, oh, Anne Hathaway, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. You know, this will be one of the main. You know, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that character and Matt Reeves' spin on it. That's really what I'm pumped for. Mm. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. Um, we have next up a Star Wars update from Bob Iger. Uh, I've got a quote here. We did a deal with David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, who are famous for Game of Thrones, in case you hadn't heard. And the next movie that we release will be theirs. And we're not saying anything more about that ever. Oh, wow. Uh, so so he's <laughs> shut that right down. So the next movie we get, 2022. 2022. Star Wars is going to be um, Benioff and Weiss. Now, does this mean they're directing? Or does this mean they're writing? I think they're just writing. Aren't it's they? um yeah, it's unclear. They're going to be in creative control. We don't know exactly what that means at this point. Um, I think we don't know. Yeah, what's really um well, that's the thing. Yeah, what's really important here is what they're not saying, which is you know they're not saying this is their trilogy. Um, they're just saying the next movie we're doing is theirs. Um, so I really feel like they're being very non-committal. Um, very conservative. And, yeah, who knows how much that could be due to Game of Thrones current um. Yeah, regard. I I love how much you know this last season has tarnished their reputation. Um, I mean, they penned eight seasons of what a lot of people consider to be really top notch um, TV and writing. And when you think about that, that's a lot of shit to to write. Um, and you know, again, good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> Uh, the ending is the ending, and you know I wouldn't have wished that job on my worst enemy. So I think that you know it's entirely fair for them to continue on with this. Like you know, just give the guys a chance. It's a it's a movie compared to eight seasons. If you're listening to the horde, yeah, then everything good ever done about Game of Thrones that was George Martin. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the just this last season that was Weiss and Benioff. <laughs> That's all they've done. <laughs> yeah, my concern with this is Disney's track record with. Uh, Star Wars directors, you know, we all know what happened with Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Trevorrow. Um, Trevorrow. I mean, I'm happy about that. Let's Everyone be is. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm worried that they're going to extrapolate all this stuff that happened with Game of Thrones and then in 12 months' time, hey, they're gone. And Ron Johnson's back. Oh, no, he's not. And then, and then we get to 2021 and it's like, ah, scramble, scramble, scramble. I'm worried that Disney and what happened with James Gunn and all this stuff, they're like going to be too reactionary and they're not going to put in a really solid plan. Mm. I feel like this th this is a good opportunity that for them to wipe the slate clean and, and kind of put that style of behavior behind them. I hope so, man. Largely because I think that you get so woven into the politics and the um, just kind of the nuances of doing prequels and sequels and all that kind of stuff just feels so like it just feels like a landmine. So I can understand the turbulence that went on kind of doing solo and, and um, the, uh, the newest trilogy and all that. This feels like a thing onto itself. And I feel like that will give them greater flexibility and kind of uh, artistic license to do whatever they need to do. Yeah. So I, I hope that that allows them to not get involved in that. What seems to have happened with the last couple of movies in the star Wars franchise. And say what you will about the um, the final season of Game of Thrones. Um, I think most of the criticisms leveled towards it are that it's not the same as Game of Thrones used to be. Um, I think it's very, uh, like, it's a pretty decent Star Wars season of TV. Like, 
It's like so much of it is so, Amy. you know, grand and sweeping and just good versus evil. Like it feels a lot more in line with that than with Game of Thrones. So yeah. obviously I can see where the criticism comes on that end, but it feels like they could make something in that universe um, easier. Yeah. 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 Hey, do you guys know how much Bob Iger's salary is? I'm going to guess dollar. a lot. $65 million annual salary. It's pretty good. Cash in the bank. That's fucking crazy, man. But you wouldn't expect that, right? With the um, like the the revenue that Disney's pulling in. Wait, that does that feel like too much or not enough? It feels like probably on. He's getting right stiffed, on. man. Yeah, it was like what, what? that's probably right on. You know, it seems inflated. If you say, "Man, this guy's salary is sixty five million," he's like, "Oh no, okay, it's Disney, and they, you know, they're taking over the world." Yeah, I wouldn't have been surprised if it was higher. Honestly, yeah, yeah probably, <laughs> maybe not I making any, sure, yeah. not making any moral judgments on that. I'm just yeah. Anyway, speaking of Disney, um, Daniel Brühl and Emily Van Camp from Captain America Civil War are in talks to join uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, reprising their roles as Helmet Zemo and Sharon Carter, respectively. Um, this is, of course, the Disney Plus show that is on the way. Uh, I think this is cool news. Yeah, after watching Civil War a couple of weeks ago, uh, I enjoyed both of these actors, and I thought they really... Um, uh, sort of held their own and established their characters quite nicely. Uh, so I am very much looking forward to, uh, especially Zemo. I thought he was a really, really interesting yeah. character. To, I don't know what it is about. Upon. Yeah, I don't know what it is about Brule that I really enjoy, but I just, I genuinely enjoy that actor in whatever he's in. Is it that he's amazing and he's uh, every single performance? Is yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that might have something to do with yeah, it. That he's that a good actor. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he's just he. I don't, the reason I say I don't know why is is because he hasn't. I don't feel like he's received the kind of praise or the the notoriety that I think he deserves. Mm. So I feel like I have to kind of give a caveat of like, you know, it's not because he's famous and, and really well known. It's more because of just everything I've seen him in, I really enjoy. And I would say the same with uh, Zemo himself. I think that is just top tier Marvel villain. Like he's absolutely in, in the discussion for me for best Marvel villain. Um, whenever we're talking about that, he's he's got such a kind of limited screen time in that film. And I think he does so much with it. Yeah, um, and and the his overall plan was was so well done in the narrative as well. Yeah, yeah. really cool and unexpected. Um, and it's it's yeah, I like that they left him alive, and I like the idea that they could bring him back. I think he left such a large footprint in the MCU in everything that came after with Infinity War and Endgame. You know, he's the one who split up the Avengers. He's arguably the, the reason they lost to Thanos. Um, so they could do fucking amazing stuff with that in this series. Um, and as for Sharon Carter, there is a character that they never did anything with. Um, Not I, 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 yeah, I can't really, I can't really agree that she was um, kind of, you know, made her mark in that in this universe because um, she feels like something they've been trying to forget ever since they did it. Um, and I honestly don't know why. Mostly just talking about the kiss they shared here. Now that yes. now, now that she is like officially kind of Captain America's niece, um, they're gonna have to do some weird tiptoeing around that. But totally. Um, but I yeah. don't know. I just thought. Um, I, I was, it was something different. It was something a little bit refreshing, maybe more of like a sort of agent of shield mm. kind of character mm. in there. Uh, I just thought she was well, I thought her p- uh, presentation and the, w- the her acting uh, was, was solid. Yeah. And I like that they're bringing her back so yes. that they can actually do something with her yeah. um, and really establish a character there. Um, Cause she was quite shortchanged by the films. Have we talked about the director for this? Six part because I just I just realized that they they tapped someone for that um in the last yeah. day or so it's uh, um Carrie Scogland yeah she is she's a TV veteran she yeah. has been on so many huge shows oh I mean like, um, over the years seriously can you list a couple off Connor uh Children of the Corn six sixty or six six hundred sixty six I know how to read something else <laughs> yeah <laughs> um. Punisher. Oh, these are movies. Sorry, she, she, that's she, that's why I'm like looking at these and be like these do not look <laughs> <laughs> well known. <laughs> Um, six, 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 six. I know how to do numbers. <laughs> I can number. Six is the um, round one. Can the count. little bit on the top. <laughs> uh, while this is loading. Um, <laughs> Fucking hell, man. <laughs> loudest voice. Why did I? Rock, uh... Condor, The Handmaid's Tale, uh, The Punisher oh, yeah. for one episode, House of Cards for one episode. Um, okay, so she's got some serious. Yeah. 
um, names up here. I'm really glad that that finally came up. Yeah, she, she, bit, bit of a show running. Is she show running this or is this? Uh, yeah, it looks like she's slated for all six or six of the episodes. I'm not sure how many episodes there are in total. I think there are meant to be six, which I don't think we knew before either, which is a, a cool length. I think that's the first one we know about. That is so, so cool. I love this approach and I hope she's directing them all because I loved what they did with that first True Detective series. And I feel like that is a really cool blueprint for them to use with this Disney Plus TV series. Do six episodes, make it feel like almost like a movie and you can binge mm. watch it in a day, boom. There's always the danger with TV shows that they can go like the 22 episodes per season route, which... Um, it's horrible. Yeah, it's not great. Um yeah, so a six-episode series coming from Disney. Can you imagine the budget on this thing? Like, they'll be, be able to make this thing, like, movie level. Like, they've said this is going to be, like, right in line with the MCU. Mm-hmm. They can actually do that. I reckon this. Netflix is just like, those fucking assholes, man. They made us make 15 or 13 episodes of Daredevil, Punisher, yeah. Je- um, Jennifer Jones, Jessica Jones. Yeah. They and Netflix has come out and said, we wanted 10 episodes. We wanted eight episodes, but Disney said, nah. Mm. I'm not having a bar of that, son. So, and also, you can't have a budget. So, Jessica Jones has to, whenever she jumps a thousand feet in the air, she just has to kind of leap off screen. Leap, yeah. <laughs> and After Effects. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> like, <yeah. laughs> that so used to be I, my most hated thing about watching that show. That just that bothered me. It wasn't as bad as Arrow, though. I remember watching. Oh, like, Arrow I think I, hard. I think I watched like I got it's like maybe season three of Arrow. I'm I'm a bit ashamed to say, but um, I I remember. Every time he like landed somewhere, it was just so clearly that he had just jumped a foot off screen. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I would say the production values were much higher in the CW than those poor Netflix shows. They they really which is suffered. ironic because um, I mean Netflix has poured an inordinate amount of money into their um, original content. Like, what was it that they slated for this year? Or last two like billion. two billion dollars. One or? last year, two this Holy year. Crap, that's all quantity. I think. Yeah. Quantity over quality, fail fast strategy. All right, more good news. John Wick 4 has been announced with a release date of May 21st, 2021. No surprises here, right? Straight away. So it was like, yeah, day one of the release. So like, yep, another one coming. Go check out our review, guys. It's up right about now. Really, really. For John Wick 4. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Um, Really unsurprising. I mean, um, that franchise is like basically the mint. They just, they print money. Like it's, it's, you know, what it's got the kind of senseless, mindless action. It's got the intrigue and world building. It's got Keanu Reeves. It's kind of like a no fail strategy. Like it's, yeah. Well, the, the impressive thing is that the, the, um, grosses seem to be be going up substantially. Like this third one's like fucking blockbuster level. I, I wasn't expecting it to do this well. Like, you know, the, um, the first film was a very kind of modest success, kind of a cult hit. Yeah. And you know what's so fantastic is we got such a box of his oh, hello. failure. Hello, little fella. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hi. This is our special guest. You're uh, meant to wait until later. Say hello, Casper. And now a kitten's <laughs> asshole. <laughs> a little white kitten. I'm going to try and talk for like For those a dog listening again. at home, oh, no. guys, my cat has uh, entered the set. So <laughs> he's just having a little wander around. Um, I thought you closed the door. I did. To avoid this specific incident. They're learning. <laughs> 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 they're evolving uh so we got hellboy earlier this okay so w- one thing that i've noticed in the movie making world is that stop um, trying to have a serious attempt, conversation you attend to them benny <laughs> and, uh, i think diesel's over there he's snuck in look at him <laughs> uh I'll, I'll i'll keep going with this yeah, uh, yeah no you here. you go ahead and try to make a point no diesel is trying to get out what i loved about the noughties was that direct to dvd sort of 60 million dollar uh movie that 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 what john wick 3 is you yeah know, what john wick 3 which is exactly what john wick 1 should have been like it's exactly what like they should have just been this kind of budget there done so John Wick 3, for example, $55 million budget already raked in $99 million. You know, it's going to be wildly profitable. It's going to make $200, $300 million. I miss that Hellboy, Blade, you know, that $50, $40, 60000000 million film that um, maybe doesn't have as much of a stranglehold from the studio um, wherein, you know, it's $200 million. We have to do this. We have to do that. We Low have risk, to make high it, reward type thing. Yeah, and we have to do, make it for a general audience. We can't make it MA or R-rated. Um, 
and it's it's you know with Hellboy earlier this year, I was like, fuck, man, that could be the nail in the coffin for this little um, <laughs> kind of genre. You know, yeah. we could get ten million dollar movies, or we get two hundred million dollar movies, and it's really great to see this performing because I hope we see more of this kind of budgeted film crop up. Completely. Um, on a more specific note, are you guys like raring to go for a fourth John Wick? I kind of am. Raring. <laughs> 2021 i will be though yeah, yeah. And i mean for when, when it does yeah i'm not saying like i need to have it now but mm. like when it when it comes out i'll be like yeah this is about time for another john wick i think this might be the new i can see this becoming the new uh james bond yeah yeah and who would they recast him as next <laughs> and uh I I think- not in that sense just you know <laughs> that the kind of you know every second year getting a, a john wick film instead of a mm. james bond film. we um it also ended up on on a very sort of solid note, a platform for them to spring off of the next one. So yeah. all the ingredients are there. Very carefully worded, George. So many ingredients. <laughs> um, so many spices. Yeah, my only hesitation is that I loved the third one. I don't know how they'd top it for me personally, except maybe by, I don't know, having an engaging story or something. But um, <laughs> Can we just not ask too much of these guys? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, maybe Killer Cats this time. Next up. Um, shot out of the dark Rick and Morty season 4 is going to premiere in November with yeah. showrunner Kanye West <laughs> just kidding <laughs> um, so that answers that question which I think we were talking about just before it happened I, yep. I'm, uh, once we finished the weekly show last week I was like do you guys have any idea mm. when um, season 4 is coming out because I had, I had just you know gone back and watched a couple of episodes from season 3 and then I think it was that night or the next day mm. it was announced that it was coming later in the year I was like oh well Ask and ye shall receive. Well, Connor, I called up my mate Dan Harmon. I'm like, hey, yeah. he's getting real antsy here. I've got to give him something. Real kind of you. Well, I'm like, I really want more Rick and Morty, but I'm sick of the fan base. So they've been pretty quiet. I, I, I enjoyed season three. Uh, they've maybe, been on Game of maybe not as much as two, but I, I'm kind of almost like quality over quantity. You know, can Rick and Morty be one of those, you know, three, four season shows and put it to bed? Mm. Leave everyone wanting more. Oddly enough, um, I just feel like the stakes are so low for Rick and Morty. You know, it's if Rick and Morty isn't good, then eh. like I don't know. Like I really don't get me wrong. I really, really enjoy Rick and Morty, and I really hope that season four is as good as season three, which I felt was as good as season two. Like I, I think they've maintained a really good level of quality throughout their run. I don't put season three on the same level as season one and two, but it's not far behind. Yeah. I mean, in the general rung of that quality, but like it just, for me, it's kind of one of those, it's structured in a way that it is of fairly low consequence. If it, if it doesn't pan out. Like Game of Thrones has a very clear arc throughout its nine seasons. The ending is actually important. Um, you know, what did I do? No, no, you said nine seasons, which I think a lot of people are That's hoping for. A nine season. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. And like, <laughs> so the, what did the, I do? The, yeah, what have I done? What, have I done? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Help! I, I didn't um, fart. <laughs> but the, the, like sticking the landing or maintaining a level of quality is really important. Where you know, Rick and Morty is episodal. Like, even if they have an entire season that is dog shit and the next one's really good, just skip that season. It doesn't matter. The community method. <laughs> yeah, pretty mm. much. So you can just jump in wherever you want yeah. effectively. And I mean, it's it's even less risk than community because community eventually, like there was more and more of a arc. And I know that Rick and Morty is getting to that point where there's like important, you know, beats that you have to know from the previous seasons. But um yeah, I, I still think that the structure of it is so episodal that it's it, it you know it's such low risk. Yeah, no, no, it's a fair point. Yeah. It's a fair point, laddie. Thank you. Um, yeah, it feels like it already kind of peaked with its saturation point with season three, and that was a little more divisive than the previous two because that was the first time it was like really in the mainstream. Yeah. Um, now they've got another what seven seasons to go. Um, I don't know. Maybe this will all ramp up again when it gets here. But I haven't really heard much about it since the announcement that this yeah. is coming back. There was in so much more like, people begging for season three. I mm. feel like everyone's kind of like Szechuan sauce. Yeah, season four is on the way. I'm not seeing that level of like anticipation and excitement. Well, let's mm. just wait until we get like an actual um, trailer or something because I think that that's when it really kicked off when people saw Pickle Rick. I think that was the defining moment when people started losing their minds. Did you guys see that they might, they're trying to get uh, Kanye West on for a guest episode to write one? 
uh, I think that is. Thwink. I think I think that is spot on. Are we just have, have all three of us now just lost the ability to speak? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm speaking okay. God <laughs> <laughs> is like soon. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Kanye West? Is that does I, that I, spring from anything? I, is that I album? honestly no, but I mean, is there like has he said he wants to do it? Because he's just fucking he's fucking loopy. So yeah. get him in. I, there. Yeah, I want to see that. I want to see it. I give so little shits about Kanye West now. Like he's just become this kind of this walking meme. Yeah, that's exactly what he is now. It, it's kind of this self referential, you know, kind of pop culture thing. This blo- blob he that just, just kind says of like things, doesn't he? Yeah, and he just wears a red hat yeah. and says things. Guess what? Kanye uh, West did something weird today. You're like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Another day. Yeah. <laughs> like, Another he's Wednesday. become so non consequential now. Anyway, I'd like to see him in there. I feel like I'm being very nihilistic and cynical this episode. Speaking of <laughs> inconsequential, we have some Avatar news. Um, just briefly, Jermaine Clement has signed on for the Avatar sequels. I thought they couldn't do anything to make me give any kind of shit about Avatar, but now with that, I'm like, Right, that's pretty good. <laughs> Taking over from uh, our boy <laughs> Sam Worthington. Sam uh, that is not the that news. Would so that would be amazing. <laughs> I would be so in for Actually, Avatar. They just know. paint like, him blue. Yeah. <laughs> is, is Sam Worthington in this? Yes. Yeah. Man, yeah. he's fucking front and center. I know he's very busy. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, sorry, Sam. Come on the pod. We love you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's one of those weird things where it's kind of like, I couldn't give two shits about this series but or this franchise, but also. Jermaine, Jermaine Clement's the man. Mm. Uh, I loved in Moana um, that song. He shiny. shiny. Yeah. Oh my lord, that's an instant classic for me. So he's so so talented. Like, let's get him in the mainstream. Yeah. Mm. Let's he's see one of those if he can do some really cool charismatic um, actors. That whatever he's in, again, you just like ah, yeah. Yes, he puts I'm glad his, you're here. He puts his thumbprint on it. Yeah. Um, he's been playing a marine biologist, I believe. So he's probably going to have a quirky kind of techie I w- I will scientist be, vibe. This is actually, now that I think about this, this, is actually a bit of a risk as well because if they underutilize him or just kind of like, I, I don't know, like it, it, it almost feels like... We're talking this up too much. He's going to have two minutes of screen time. Yeah. And we're all going in with wearing like Jermaine Clement t-shirts. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, hey, Avatar 2. <laughs> Cheerleader. Release the Jay. Jermaine Clement cut. See, yeah. Jay. See. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jermaine Clement's uh, the only JC for me. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? It's Jermaine Clement time. <laughs> also sometimes referred to as trailer time. Mm. Um... So we've got a few trailers this week. First on our list, uh, we have the first full-length trailer for Once Upon and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Tarantino's Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time. Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, Tarantino's latest film. Um, yeah, I. You guys watched it. I watched it. <laughs> yeah. I like this a lot more than Let's the last trailer. Let's give us Me opinions. Too. Yeah, the last trailer was very much like. Whatever Tarantino's making a new movie, that's yep. the news here. This one, I was like, oh, this actually looks really interesting. Yeah, I, so I'm on- loving the camaraderie between uh, Leo and Brad Pitt. I mm. think they are bouncing off each other so well in this. Mm. I um, Maybe this is just me being bad at recent movie history, but I, I had no idea that Rick Dalton wasn't a real person. I just kind of <laughs> went along with this, assuming that he was real. Mm. Um, turns out he's not. Yep. <laughs> um, but I, I, yeah, I really like this. We also got to see how Manson fits into all of this. Mm. Um, you know, we knew that they were neighbors, but this kind of feels a little bit more, you know, you get to see the kind of relationship that builds and how he fits into it a little bit more. And we got, um, we got some early reviews out of Can, not Cans, Can. Uh, and it's not Can They've been very positive, extremely Blowing. positive. Yeah. Is that um, overly surprising though? M- might even be Tarantino's best, they're saying. Some people are saying like this is his last, you know, obviously it's, it, well, we'll see what happens, but they're saying, you know, if he goes out on this, doesn't make a 10th film, hey, that's a good way to finish it up. So everything here is looking very, very positive. Also the look of this film and the production design looks absolutely gorgeous, the period setting. I am so in. I am so keen. I'm so much more keen for this than I ever was for The Hateful Eight, which I still haven't seen. The only Tarantino film I ever haven't seen. And it, that is playing at our cinema soon. Is it? On 70 mil. You've got to come watch okay, that. Okay, yeah. There's I, something I, I about would actually this that like I, to see that in, in 70 mil. There's mm. something about this that is just really resonating with me. Mm. Mm. 
I um, apparently sorry, just quickly, um, Tarantino was had said that this is his most like Pulp Fiction, so I could see why it's kind of grabbing. People yeah, for that. that. Um, the I watching the trailer, I'm just trying to figure out how he's going to subvert the expectation that he's setting with this trailer. That's all I can think of. Because I mean, every time I've watched a trailer for his movies, I feel like it doesn't really give away what the movie's about or the mm. feel of the movie. So I, I almost felt like I was being deceived by this trailer. I was just trying to figure out, like, how is he going to, like, well, where is he going to subvert? Where is he going to change? You're watching like, it just like, yeah, right. Yeah. Sure thing, trailer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you. Leo's not even in this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, or that, you know, someone's going to die in the first 10 minutes, mm. you know, share it out. Like, it's just that kind of thing is, um, I, I just feel like a severe distrust watching this trailer. <laughs> I think they're really going to fuck with history. Like he did with In- yeah, Inglorious yeah, totally. Bastards um, in some way, but I guess not in a, a horribly disrespectful way because people seem to be really happy with the movie. So that's I cool. wonder if they're going to tie in that, um, you know, how Leonardo DiCaprio's character was shooting down those Nazis. I wonder if there's going to be any tie in there with Inglorious Bastards. Mm, my thinking was like he's shooting a movie version of the actual events in this universe that happened or something. That had, now that yeah, would be yeah. cool. Mm. Something like that. Mm. Because they're all loosely tied together as movies. The Tarantino verse. Mm. Love it. Very excited. August 15th couldn't come sooner as far as I'm concerned. Right. Well, maybe June 20 could. Uh, Toy Story 4 is our next trailer. Um, um, this, I mean, I think we're all on the same page, which is such a risk to go back into this franchise and make another one. It feels like they left it on such a beautiful, wonderful note with the end of Toy Story 3. This is like dragging out my inner child and saying, now watch what you have done. <laughs> How do we feel about the trailer, though? I, I don't know. It kind of looks like a remake of the first one in a lot of ways. Um, a little bit. But I, I think I, I, there is a hint that they're tackling some themes that are really building on where this series has gone before. Yeah. Like every one of these movies feels like it's going further um, into into the, the, the kind of meta story of these toys. Um, I, I honestly want to stay optimistic about this because, you know, they've they've done it twice before with mm. these Toy Story sequels. Who can say? I think it's going to be a 6, 7 out of 10. You know, I just don't think it's going to be at that same level. Are you thinking like kind of an Incredibles 2 level? Ugh. Wow, that would suck, man. <laughs> that would really suck. Um, it, it's hard to say because part of me thinks like, I, I'm trying to sort of say, is this a bad trailer or is this a bad movie? And, and, I, and in terms of a trailer, it's an okay trailer, but I, I'm just not seeing anything here that's really hooking me in yeah. to say, fuck yeah, Toy Story 4. The trailer was really just kind of, here's a set of scenes that are in the movie. And that's really all that I felt the trailer was. It didn't really have... You know, there's some trailers that have a, a real, like you said, like you mentioned, like a hook, something that really drags you in. Whereas this one was just, you know what Toy Story is. Here's a couple of the scenes in there. One of the things that I did find interesting, however, was that, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first time that we've seen toys directly interacting with humans in like a very physical and, and overt way with the, um, the, the fluffy guys, the fluffy guys just attacking the, the woman. I mean, I think it's a bit of a dream sequence. Like it's a, you know, that's what they're suggesting they could do. But um, also for me, that would just felt very weird. Well, I mean, in the in the first one, they traumatized Sid for life. Um, sent that poor kid yeah, into yeah, the psych yeah. ward. That but, major um, plot point in the first one. Good but point. But yeah, like phys- phys- <laughs> physically assaulting someone. Yeah. yeah that's, that's new. I, I'm interested to see if that's actually what happens in the yeah. film. Um, I, I, I'm very intrigued by the Bo Peep character because I... Oh, if, she's evil. If for she was sure. like even in two or three, we didn't even see her much at all. But... um. Yeah, they're clearly doing something very interesting with her. Yeah. Um, so kind of I, interesting I, to see you know, what, what Are we is. calling it now that she's the villain of this film? I mean, you are. Okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> die on that sword. <laughs> 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 Just going to go uh, set up on my little hill yeah. here and... You know what? It's you know it's it's this thing where it's like art versus commerce, and I think that Toy Story one, two, and three was such a beautiful little ensemble of animated mm. films that worked so well together as a collective. Um, I'm just not seeing the rationale behind bringing in a fourth entry but to I the mean, franchise. Make no mistake, people said the same thing about three. Three felt very commercially driven, um, you know, and and that turned out to be have a lot of heart and integrity to it. So. I think that 
they deserve some level of trust from their fan base, you know, Pixar and the people behind Toy Story. Um, because, to a degree, to a degree. Yeah, because they well, they have pulled it off before. It would be a massive shame if something like that, you know, if this last one really dipped the franchise. But, um, you know, that's the risk you have to run, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I would say they pulled it off a lot less than they haven't pulled it off yeah. with all the other sequels and prequels. But uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll be there day one to find out. Yeah. Let's usher in the the reanimation or the golden age of Pixar again. Mm -hmm. um, next, we've got Midsummer. Uh, I I never watched Hereditary. So Whoa! This is um, it's probably the best for everyone. I think. Yeah, because <laughs> you don't need my comments on it. No. Um, <laughs> this feels very atmospheric. The trailer, and it looks as though the the um, uh, the movie will be. Uh, I'm going to call it now. People are going to hate this film. You know what's really big cool? Call. <laughs> you know what's really great For about this? The, the follow up to the movie that got an F cinema score. I love yeah, well, seeing. It's a, I mean, it's not like a like a. It's not a really big call. <laughs> that's, a, that's why I'm making it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In I'm fact, I'm betting two hundred dollars yeah. on it. <laughs> I love seeing Ari Aster's name coming up on this. He's only done one feature before, which is Hereditary. Mm -hmm. But they're that confident in him. They have so much trust that they're going to put his name front and center. And that's really fucking cool. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've talked about this before. Um, directors that have one hit and how much confidence should we be placing in a director that has, you know, has succeeded once. Um, and I'm still of the opinion that make three or four really good films and then i think you deserve that kind of trust whereas I that's think, like a 10-year process you know like yeah these i know guys, exactly i don't think people should be in this business short for films like it's not like these people just pop out of nowhere and they go hey i'm gonna make a film mm. like there's so much that they've done to try and hone their craft and become a better film but in terms of making like the the difference between making a short and making a feature is like apples and oranges i mean there, there's just it's just so beyond um, you know, like they're just so different. So I think that, and and I don't think that people should. And be able the to feature make, as well. I think you know you can have a ten million dollar film. Um, you yeah, could do exactly. an indie. You could do a tw two hundred million. And there's so many different exactly. skill sets required in there. So I think that you know the. I think people should. I don't think people should come into the industry for for, for like the big to the. Sorry, I shouldn't say the industry. I don't think that should, people should make one feature and then just be hailed as the greatest director of all time. Not that anyone is, but. I, I oh, just you're prone to hyperbole. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I what I will say about Hereditary, it is it is the most assured debut feature I think I've ever seen. Like it does not feel like it's coming from a first time director. Yeah. Right from the first shot, it is it is amazing. And um, he's got a relationship with A24, mm -hmm. and that's remained consistent. And they are producing only good stuff. In yeah, my speaking, speaking of consistency, A24, yeah. fucking hell. So it's not like he's gone up the ranks or anything, and he's got a, a bigger budget, and he, it looks like a yeah. similar scale scope mm. to hereditary mm. similar yeah. similar i think the trailer itself fuck i think this looks gorgeous oh man yeah. and so uh, off kilter for a horror movie you mm. know it doesn't look like any horror movie i've seen I, I like this whole like it sort of reminded me a little bit of that um what happened with fire festival you know this sort of like <laughs> enchanted festival mm. that's like whimsical and we're going back in time or you know like kind of, what's that one um, burning man festival over uh, in, in the states, you know this 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 other experience that you can't get in your everyday life. Mm. I like that theme that's coming through there, yeah. um, and I'm liking the ensemble of kids as well. Yeah, the star Florence Pugh. She was just in um, fighting uh, with my family. Mm. Um, she was so good in that and breakout star. I, and Will also, Poulter as well. Always pumped to mm. see him. I also really love um, horror that is set outside and in nature. I think there's something just really creepy about it. Like, I mean. For anyone that's been camping and like has the found witch. themselves, um, <laughs> let's not please let's not go there. Um, for anyone that's been outside and, and like camping in that and has found found themselves in like the middle of nowhere, there's the, there's this kind of almost like existential horror that you can sometimes get. Um, you hear a rustling. It's like what the yeah, fuck is that? Yeah, it's just like you know, not having people, you know, not having anyone around you, just being like that. That can instill a sense of you know, kind of just naturalistic horror. And I think that. Directors that use that really well, I think that that's really effective. And I, I got that from this trailer. I felt as though that was coming across, like kind of being out in the wilderness and, you know, away from what m most of us associate with safety. Yeah. Um, I think that's really cool. 
And I think he's definitely got some kind of uh, obsession with cults. We saw a big cult theme in Hereditary mm. and uh, there's definitely something there here. So there's going to be some kind of continuity there. I'm pumped. I'm so pumped for this, man. Yeah, Hereditary is my favorite film of last year. So I am just so lined up to be really... massively disappointed by this movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really do need to dial that in. Um, all right. Next, we've got Black Mirror um, Season 5. From Netflix. So is it the last it was Boulder Dash considered a season? I guess suppose it wouldn't be, would it? Band Bandersnatch? Bandersnatch, that's what I meant to say. Mm. Um I'm not sure. I never watched it, to be honest. Neither did I. I never finished the previous season. I've got a couple of friends that have gone through the different endings and said that the gimmick was interesting, but overall it was a bit exhausting. Uh, yeah, I never heard of kind of amazing things. Yeah. I think it's cool that Netflix is trying things and, yeah. and kind of exploring with the medium. It's mm. an evolutionary um, tech. Yeah. I certainly won't begrudge them for doing that. They've also got the um, Wild Adventures or whatever it's called from Bear Grylls, yeah. where you get to pick, you know, um, man versus you, or you versus you wild, versus wild or man yeah. versus you. What yeah. the fuck <laughs> <laughs> comes out of the TV and attacks you? Uh, um, yeah, face dripping with piss. Yeah, I'll never begrudge Christ. them for for exploring and uh, the medium and trying something new. Um, I think they. Uh, I'm I'm glad that they're going back to the standard um, kind of season. Just style. um, just three episodes, which is yeah. cool. Did you guys watch the last season or any seasons? I've watched a handful of episodes here and there across all the seasons, Same. and I really enjoy this show. I sh- I'm surprised I haven't watched more, but that first episode of season two, uh, with our friend uh, Fat Damon, uh, uh, the Star yeah. Trek one, yeah, that blew me away. That no, was good stuff. That that's such good television, man. What were the ones that I I watched one with John Hamm that I thought was really well done. Oh yeah. Um, I remember that one. Where he goes into someone's mind and just kind of replays a scene, I think is the concept. thought that was really cleverly done. Um, I watched also one with the guy from The Last Jedi, the general guy. Donald Gleason and Hayley that's, Atwell. That's, that, that's probably one. my favorite episode. That one That was really so spectacular. I think I've seen yeah. that one. Fuck, you got to check that one out. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't finish like the last two or three episodes of the last season. Even though I really enjoyed the season, I don't know. I find something exhausting about these like – you know, dark technology morality tales. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, I, <laughs> feels like you're being. Who preached. do I have to watch die now? Yeah, like, yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's really, it feels like you're being intense. preached to, and you're like, yeah, I, I get it. We're we're headed for Armageddon. <laughs> Sitting there on your phone, yeah. like, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, all right, <laughs> I'll put fine. It down. <laughs> Some pretty big heavy hitters here. We've got Anthony Mackie. We've got uh, what's Miley name? Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Yeah, yeah, Abdul Mateen. Number yeah, three two. from uh, uh, Aquaman. Aquaman. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's all looking pretty positive. Mm. Yeah, I like how they get just kind of relatively large talent in for a single se- like uh, a single episode, um, and then it changes for the next episode. Mm. That that for me is really cool. Yep, and it gives a draw card to it as well, so it puts you know eyeballs to screens. If you know, like, I want to see Miley Cyrus in the new um, you know episode, so I think mm. that's really cool that they're um, yeah, they're, they're it, from a marketing point of view that they're getting that out there. Yeah, totally. Yeah, good strategy. Um, we also have next. I skipped this one. Sorry, his Dark Materials coming out in late 2019. Do you know what's so interesting? The psychology of watching. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago we reviewed the uh, a previous trailer for this, and it was the BBC YouTube channel. And then I watched the so this one, this new one on the HBO movie channel. And it's amazing the psychology of seeing a BBC logo slapped on there versus mm-hmm. an HBO logo because I have so much more confidence <laughs> in HBO than yeah. the BBC. Mm. So now I'm like purely on that alone, I would say. I'm like, wow, I'm actually kind of excited like for it this. It looks more expensive somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, Better, like the really, sheen. man. Like it's like the psychology of this. And I'm, I'm my day job's in marketing. Like I should be I should be well aware of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, it's funny how the mind works. It's not actually you, George. Um, HBO actually sends a shittier version to BBC. <laughs> <laughs> you get this. Um, <laughs> like the Watership Down yeah. uh, CG rabbits. The, oh, I'll never get that down. out of my head. <laughs> um, never. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I, there's some legitimacy to that because HBO is kind of this brand stamp of quality. I mean, a lot of the, what we're saying about HBO and, and you know, all that kind of stuff is a bit less impactful this week, particularly because of the Game of uh, Groans. Pe- Game of Groans. Actually, that's yeah. pr- pretty accurate. <laughs> the Game of Groans. I haven't heard that before. I've <laughs> genuinely <laughs> lost the ability to speak this week. Brain, no work. Um, but... Uh, 
yeah, I, I think that they've earned that kind of response. In terms of the actual trailer, um, I'm trying to remember, did you ever read the books? Uh, I read the first one. Yeah. I thought that it, it was from memory, because I, I read Northern all the three. Yeah, was the first one. Um, I thought that they did a really cool job of exploring um, and, and kind of like building a world, um, also referred to as world building. Um, what building? What building? <laughs> Jesus, I need a doctor. This is bad. <laughs> How bad would that be? It's like I'm just having a stroke at, on That's the a podcast. The podcast is yeah. like once we hit record, <laughs> we're going. <laughs> no retakes. And the police are interviewing me with me yeah. dead in the seat. Yeah. Like, were there any warning signs? <laughs> um, um, I love this power vacuum that's formed um, with the, the the ending of Game of Thrones, and we just have all these like huge, big budget series from HBO themselves in a lot of cases and, and other sources just like rushing in to try and be the next thing. Yeah, Watchmen, yeah. this. Because mm. so many people have kind of stated that Game of Thrones will likely be the last of its kind, like this huge cultural event TV week to week watching um, thing because the way that streaming's kind of moved in, like Game of Thrones, you know, eight years old or whatever it is, um, is of a different era already. Totally. Yeah, but um, I do know that format. The Mandalorian is going to be released weekly on Disney+. Plus. That's cool. So it'll be interesting to see you, how their release strategy is from show to show. Do you enjoy that or do you think there's value to that, releasing it week by week? For me yes. and the way I watch, it's very, very good for me. Yeah. Really you good. You get worn out quick. I get <laughs> worn out like two episodes. I'm like, holy crap, i got to go to bed, man. But I mean, you can just watch one episode per week. If you I want. could, I could. No, nah. <laughs> <You could. laughs> it's not possible. Could. Those, those like really strictly imposed restrictions from from an outside source. I think some people kind of need that because um, I, I remember thinking watching the first season of Daredevil, like the second day it was out, me kind of finishing the last few episodes and being like, I have loved this so so much. I wish it could have been part of my life for thirteen weeks. Mm. You know, watching one at a time going over it, having the conversation week by week. I love, you know, reading like AV Club reviews, going just scrolling through the comments for ages. Yeah. Um, I, re I really enjoy that way of watching stuff. Yeah, rather than it's sort of like all coming out and it's like, hey, here's the season review. It's like been interesting to see a lot of the big YouTubers, everyone, every week they're pumping out a Game of Thrones review. Mm. Uh, so you get to get, keep that conversation going for a longer time. Mm. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. I, I think that the in general – Obviously, we're moving more towards like a big dump from you know each season. And mm. to be honest, the way that I watch seasons, I, I much, much, much prefer that. I uh -huh. hate the idea of like turning off a, an episode and just being like, "Well, I guess I'll watch that when the studio tells me to watch it," and then just mm -hmm. kind of moving on. Like, I just, I really, really don't like that. Mm. Um, but what, what about you know, this trailer itself? Polar bear. His dark materials. Is a monkey chasing a ferret? Yeah. I bet, it's good. Ben, do you have any kind of context? I know nothing on about this. I remember polar bears wearing armor from Golden Compass. The movie. Don't yeah. Use that as a reference. Um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't watch the movie. It's um, terrible. Yeah, no, I, there's, there's a lot of really cool um, concepts in, in the world. And I think that they're, um, this trailer looks a lot more serious and a lot more um, well put together than the movie did. Um, they've obviously got some pretty, pretty good talent involved as well. <sighs> mm. um, James McAvoy being on that list. Um, for starters, um, yeah, I I think that this is this could work up to be a really good series. You know, they're working off some pretty solid um, material. No reason that this can't blow up. Yeah, I think for me the biggest thing jumping out from this trailer is the logo, the HBO logo for me. So <laughs> it's like one of those like let's give it a crack because I'd like to see something that, like this. I like these kind of things, uh, these sort of British fantasy set in the modern world or um yeah yeah should we move on let's do it okay um finally we have primal fall the new series from um, primal ben. releasing okay. in the fall <clears throat> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so primal from gendy tartakovsky the creator of dexter's laboratory uh samurai, samurai jack, jack the original clone wars animated series um this came out of nowhere i had no idea this adult swim series yeah um you pointed me towards it yeah I mean, you and I are massive fans of this guy mm -hmm. and um, he's been doing Hotel Transylvania for a while now mm. and it's just so fantastic to see him go back to that original hand-drawn animation have style guys, that he, he, know, he's, he, he started off in and, yeah. and carved out his brand. Have you guys watched Hotel Transylvania? 
Total Transylvania? I've seen one or two, yeah. Um, I think they are amazing. Like, yeah. they're, they're dumb Adam Sandler comedies with the best animation that's ever been committed to screen in terms of these, these you know, 3D animated movies, these yeah. family ones. I'm the exact same as you. I've, I've not seen uh, three yet. or Probably won't. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I was wildly surprised by one and two. I thought that they, yeah, they you know, they were way better than they had any right to be. Character um, designs in particular were just yeah. so good. Did, um, and have you guys watched uh, right through uh, Samurai Jack? And yep. Years ago, not a long time. Yeah. yeah. But I've loved that really heavy weighted line style that he has. And uh, it's just so cool to see it back. This is probably going to be similar to the Clone Wars series where it's, sort of quite silent and it's all yeah. about the visuals. And yeah, and he really proved with that series and a lot of Samurai Jack that he can tell an amazing story with just visuals. Yeah. Um, and this looks like they've just said, Gendy, you can make whatever you want to yeah. make. Here's um, money. Yeah. Go make something. <laughs> yeah, probably not much, but um, here it is. You but can I mean, have all does the money he need that much? No, no, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. And and it looks like he moves, it's a, a passion project of some kind. Yeah. It looks like it's going to be violent as hell. Yeah, he's that was the most surprising that, uh, thing. He stabbed that thing. I don't remember Dexter's laboratory being that uh, <laughs> that wildly violent. Um, no, I'm just so so pumped for this. Mm. Can't wait. I think they could go so many different ways with this, and that's what really interests me. Because I think that um, whenever mediums uh, move into this area, I think it's such a risk. Because there's, you know, the what do you mean? Well, it, it, that timeline, like it, it's you know, kind of that oh, humanoid pretty, pretty. ape. Type historic. thing, so you you don't get dialogue really, but you you know it's it's just, you have to be a little bit more inventive in the way that you tell stories, and I think that there's a lot of it's a big risk, but you can get kind of high level reward as well. I remember um, uh, Far Cry actually did it; um, they did an entire you know game set in that era, and they said that like we're going to kind of peel back what we've been doing for years and just try something new and inventive and risky, and I I, I thought that was really cool. So yeah, nice. Nice, nice. Whoa, that's my stomach. That was my stomach. Should we cap it off with question of the week? Question of the week. Oh, my goodness. And, guys, if you have a question, let us know because we'll answer it. You ask a question, you get an answer. It's so fucking good. Tell you what. Here we go. Anthony DeRizzo, our boy, Anthony DeRizzo, our fucking boy, tuning in every week. Thank you, sir. Here's his question. If a film about your life story was being made, who would you want to direct it and who would you want to be playing you? Who would? Who? <laughs> Amazing question. <laughs> so I think that... Uh, Life story, director, lead actor. Yeah. So the lead actor is pretty easy for at least two of us. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, running, George, who, do think, gag, who do you think should this, be playing There's this running you? gag uh, on this podcast... Oh, that I look like John Cusack, which I find highly <laughs> offensive. But uh, I kind of love it as well. <laughs> I think John Cusack is offended by you thinking that it's offensive. Yeah, at least at least nobody thinks I look like Kevin Spacey. So that's good. Um, Why Kevin Spacey? Have you not seen that interview? So this girl mistakes a John Cusack for Kevin Spacey. She's like, I loved you in American... Um, oh, no. American... Beauty. American Beauty. And he's like... Not Idol? I, I wasn't in that movie. <laughs> He's so pissed off as well. No. So so that's for me. You would uh, no, be. But who would you pick? Sorry, I've, I've, I've kind of just well, taken Well, you know, I, I haven't really thought about it because I'm like, that's my designation in life. I'm the fucking John Cusack guy. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, you know, where do I go from there? Ben, I always you- thought I had a fat head like Leonardo DiCaprio. And that's about the only <laughs> Leo's sort a, of- Leo's a good pick. Uh, parallel i can see between myself and him yeah so one of those two let's go lean on a dicaprio <laughs> yeah let's take it up a couple of notches yeah. yeah ben do you have any any suggestions for george uh no i think he's he's nailed it there with uh with john Cusack. No. <laughs> uh, no that's a dangerous game to play um i gotta stick with myself um i was thinking who is a good kind of uh sarcastic prick um, <laughs> um, and the first guy that came to mind was um, Adam Scott from uh, Parks and Recreation, Ben Wyatt. Um, he's a little more sincere in that show, but he often does play a, just a really good asshole. Um, and then I thought um, Glenn Howerton from uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, because that's a character I've I've long um, felt a kinship with. Just an absolutely fucking psychotic narcissist, but um, not not in every it's element. Recommend. Not in every element of his <laughs> character, but um, there's just something about his self-absorption and just 
being horrible to everyone. I'm like, yeah, I like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, Connor? Um, I was actually going to make a suggestion for you. I, and I don't know why I necessarily think this, but I think Nicholas Holt would do a good job of um, playing you. Very talented young man. Um, extremely beautiful. I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take it for what it's worth. Mm. Um, myself, I'm a little bit like yourself though, George, which is that I've been typecast um, a fair few times as uh, James McAvoy, mm. um, which is, I could be... The, could be so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Connor's catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe it could be. It could you know, be worse. You know so funny, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard a rumor that James McAvoy, when he got cast as Professor X, he literally legged it home and shaved his head. <laughs> yeah. And is this true? I've I've heard it as well. Was that on that yeah, Nando yeah, V movies podcast? I'm not sure. I don't know. But and then they were like, um, wait. <laughs> you actually well, have yeah. you have hair. hair in this one. There's a hair <laughs> origin story. Don't worry. They should have listened to, to James McAvoy. Yeah. We didn't need yeah. three movies of hair origin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um What about director? So this is this is actually what I'm really interested in. Be- because the director that you choose to portray your life is going to define how that story is is told and and in what way, like you know kind of if for example if Tarantino you know directs your life it's yeah. going to be nothing like your actual life um it's you'll effective. kill Hitler yeah you're, exactly that's my thing. like it's it's going to be you're going to be wildly violent you'll be able to complete full sentences in the the script there <laughs> <Yeah>. me oh <laughs> god <Yeah>. no <laughs> not even close um so I got to pick you got a pick? I got a pick. This is, the, this is, oh, fuck, oh. man. I've been saving this up. Yeah. Terrence Malick, baby. <laughs> Tree of life. Yeah. I want some fucking interstellar planetary shit about my life. Like, let's take this cosmic. So you want your life story to be a movie you could never get through? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Seven days long. Because that's my fucking life. <laughs> that's very accurate. Yeah. My, this movie makes me want to blow my brains out, like my <laughs> life. <laughs> I think if I was going to pick something seriously, though, it would be, um, I think, I don't know why it's sort of a default answer, but I really, I've always loved Chris Nolan's sensibility. He doesn't do um, biographies or whatever, but biopics, but um, his sensibility just fits within my I would my inner self. love to see your life in excruciating detail with his sense of like a Hans Zimmer booming score. You typing away on a laptop. <laughs> Just like, oh yeah, he's watching a movie on his laptop. Age 14. <laughs> fucking crazy, man. Um, Remember that time he, he won the soccer game? <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I was thinking who could make a completely average uh, 20-something white guy slacker seem interesting and I was like, Edgar Wright. Okay. Because that's what he's done his whole career. <laughs> yeah. um, like he, he, he can take mundane stuff, like he did so well with Spaced, his TV series, and just do that crazy editing style he does, just go nuts with it. I'm like, you could watch anything that he makes and be like, yeah, this is really interesting and yeah. fun. Good pick. Yeah. What about and, Kevin Smith? Um, I don't like Kevin Smith. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, he could also be a good <laughs> Mundane pick. white dude. <laughs> that's Kevin Smith. I like like the rest of the world. I think I like Kevin Smith a lot more since he had the heart attack and everyone was like, oh shit, is Kevin okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things that you're like really mean to someone and you realize that like that actually he, might have hurting. an impact and you're like, oh no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Are you he's okay? Hurting. No, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Everyone likes clerks too, I yeah. swear. <laughs> um, I don't have a good reason to, but Aronofsky. <laughs> I mean, just because I enjoy an Aronofsky film. <laughs> Aronofsky, really? Yeah. Interesting. I, oh, yeah, I want to see the Black Swan version of your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, that would be yeah. amazing. I mean, I just, I don't know. I, I, I can't think, uh, for me, it's just, it doesn't matter what director you pick, that they're going to tell their version of your life. It's going to so, be far removed from reality. Exactly. Like and I biopics. can't think of one that, like, you know, I don't know that my life has a really defining characteristic in it. That sounds so terrible. <laughs> um, but that, that that lends itself to a particular director. Like, I mean, the, the only thing that I can think of is, um, you know, I, I really, really enjoy being outside and, and kind of in nature and that. And and anyone that shoots um, nature really well, but they're, they're all, you know, I can't think of anyone. That they're would. all fucking hippies. Yeah, exactly. I think Danny Boyle could make like a good 127 hours type thing. With oh, you. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, except I just, I don't want to be walking around with a half an arm. So. <laughs> yeah. that, that's where it's it diverges from, yeah. <laughs> from reality. Um, but yeah, it's all James McAvoy, Aronofsky, why not? 
No, like, I was, watched that film. Like hmm. that was that was a great question. Guys, yeah. send us your questions. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on YouTube. Let us know. We will answer it, guaranteed. Don't you fucking worry about don't it. Don't tell us who you think should play us. We don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Just the shit yeah. emoji. That was that. That was the. Uh, I said this yesterday as we were walking into the Aladdin um, screening, uh, and all I said is, I can't handle another comment saying, "Did you guys style your hair?" Uh, or yeah, your haircuts after the main characters in Aladdin <laughs> after that comment uh, for um, Endgame. Endgame. That was mm. good. Well, guys, go check out our Aladdin review. Go check out our Game of Thrones spoiler review. We've also got Detective Pikachu up there. John Wick. So much cool content. We'll be back next week for the weekly movie show. Don't you worry about it. See you then, Connor. Gotcha. See you then, Benny. Bye. Bye. Checkity check. Oh, checkity check. <laughs> what were you expecting Hello to do? There. I was just going to be quiet. What this did you want to What's achieve? the bet? Podcasting 2040, it's just going to be floating there. None of this bullshit. <laughs> it's the best part. Yeah, I agree. I concur. How are we feeling about that there, Georgie boy? So fucking good. So fucking good? I'm and like kind of kind of like getting turned on right now. All right, Modus operandi of Georgie boy. Fucking eating and shitting and podcasting. All in the same seat too. <laughs> it's a great life.